Hey everybody, it's me, Marco from Analog Things, and today I want to jump with you into 4x5 photography and the project I'm planning to do in the next few weeks, maybe month, months, we will see. Let's start with the basics of 4x5 photography and Polaroid photography. What is it on 4x5 and everything. So for 4x5 photography, that's 4x5 inch, that's large format photography, you need a large format camera, like the one here or the one in the back, the Scenar. The Scenar is all, all like actually 8x10, but I also got the 4x5 back for it. Large format cameras can be scary because they're big and they're old most of the times and they are heavy. And they're actually like, if the first time you get one in your hands, you don't really know what to do with all the knobs on the camera and everything. But they're fairly easy when you understand the first time what actually happens. What's actually the difference between this one and the camera that you know with focusing on the, on the lens? Well, not a lot. Just that with a modern lens, the focusing, when you turn the wheels, the lenses inside of the lens move and can generate a different focusing. With old cameras, like the Graflex here, that wasn't the case. You didn't have to move the lens or anything. You just move the front, like you move the lens. You actually move the front lens. But this camera, you just move it forward or backward, like this, to put the focus. And by moving the lens, you change the sharpness field on the film layer that's in the back. In the back of the camera, you got a ground glass. I marked here my ground glass with this tape. That's when I shoot um, Type 100 film on 4x5. That's a 4x5 camera. 8x10 also exists. For 8x10 we are lucky that Polaroid Richness produces a film. I will get to that in one of the future episodes, but luckily 8x10 we can still shoot. For 4x5 that was one of the most amazing Polaroid films. And it looks like this. So it's a really distinct look of the image, of the frame, because it had, it had this brown paper. So like, actually, you would remove this brown paper to get the final image. But everybody loves it so much that you keep it like this and store the pictures like this. There's different versions of the film. There's color films. There's also black and white versions of the film. They are amazing. But unfortunately, as with Type 100, they are not produced anymore. So what do we have to do to shoot 4x5? nowadays or where do we get film? Well there's one company called New55. They also like they were producing black and white film. They wanted to reproduce the 55 Polaroid film which was a black and white film with a negative and positive. But at the moment it doesn't look too good for the company I, I think. So if we don't buy a lot of film from them they know they are not gonna have a good time. What's also a problem is in my opinion the 4x5 film is amazing and uh, uh, the, the 55 because you got a negative and a positive. But the problem is, for the same price, you already get an 8x10 from Polaroid Originals, which is four times the size. I mean, it's not negative, it's just an integral film, so positive, but still, it's four times the size. I'm not sure where to, to put that. 4x5 film. How does that film actually look? So it comes in a box like this. So that's Polaroid 51 film. Um, I still got a few boxes of this left. And inside, this film comes as single sheets. So single sheets of film and one single film sheet looks like this. So we got this side facing towards the camera and it tells you not to pu push here or like not to squeeze the because in here there's actually the chemistry of the film. So if you're about to buy film and you find an open package and you still want to see if it works just softly squeeze here and you can still feel chemistry moving around and there's not uh, uh, like solid rocks inside of it, it could still work. Most of the films are not covered completely anymore by chemistry, but they kind of work if they were stored pretty good. We also have like, if you turn around, we have the information of the film. This one is Polar Pan 51 and it is ISO 640 at 5500 Kelvin and ISO 400 at 3200 Kelvin. What is the Kelvin? That's actually the light temperature. So at the moment I'm filming at daylight and the light from coming oops, here above me, that's actually 3200 Kelvin. So tungsten light. This one is warm light, this one is daylight, cold light. That's how you can separate them. The higher the temperature, the colder the light, the lower the temperature, the warmer the light. Candlelight has a really low Kelvin. Okay, and then down here, which we are missing on Polaroid Originals film, 
is the temperature the film develops actually. This film develops at 21 to 32 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. But if we step down to 13 degrees, it already extends 50 seconds. That's an important note. We already had that problem with old Polaroid film. So that's when you notice Polaroid originals, well, they can't get rid of that problem. That's when you come into the problem with temperature and film development times and color shifts. So if you want to know more about that, take a look at the video about temperature. So four by five. What else do we need? Well, we can't put that into the camera like this. So we need a Polaroid film holder for the four by five. These four by five film holders look like this. That's Polaroid. 5i, that's one a little modern version. There's one with a timer and there's older versions of it too. There's here the P and L for loading and processing. And as with every Polaroid, we got rollers. Here are rollers and they also need to be clean. That's the Polaroid process. So how this is gonna be, you put the switch to load, you take your film, this side towards lens, well guess where the side looks like out here because if it would look, in, would look in the back there would be no exposure but a lot of people mistaken it. So you take that, put it on top here, slowly put it in till you hear that little click. Now the film is locked in. I still leave it unlocked. I put it in the back of the camera, just in the back of the camera and then I pull out these sheets that cover the negative expose the image, put them back, switch the thing to process, pull out film. Since we don't want to process that film, I just pull it out again and release it. Okay, perfect, we got the film out again. So that's how it worked with the Polaroid 4x5. There's also like, if you want to shoot regular film, you have the option of loading a film holder, that's actually by 5x7, but a little bit bigger, but the one for 4x5 looks exactly the same. And there's also one option of putting roll film into the camera. Roll film comes like this, it has a cartridge where you put film inside and load it to the 4x5 camera. So you can see. Okay, these are the options that we have at the moment. But for me as an instant addict, well, what should I do? I'm not getting any one of this film anymore. I don't want to shoot on roll film too much. I want to shoot instant. I can't cut the 8x10 in half. A new 55 isn't looking too good to produce a film and it's pretty expensive. So my idea was to step up the game. And this video is about stepping up that game and I'm gonna produce my own film holder. So what does that mean? I wanna shoot actually real Polaroids like this on that camera. How, do that, how does it work actually? Well, there's an option which people do is to take the film holder, to put the frame inside, they take a picture, they go to the dark room, they put the frame out, put it in the cartridge, give it in the camera, the camera throws it out, it's developed. That's not a process you will do on a shooting on a daily basis. That's annoying and that's really complicated. The other option is there's one really rare bag that's this one here. That's a CB72, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think so. That's actually a bag that has no camera on top. But you can see the elevation here like, is pretty high. It could be possible to make a mount for this for this thing, put in the back of the camera and shoot the film. And you should be fine. That's one option. And I'm really going for kind of this option, but these things on eBay are really expensive and hard to get, they're rare. So we need something that's more accessible to the mainstream audience at the moment. So one option would be taking an instant lab and cutting the instant lab in half and putting it in the back. The other option would be getting an old Polaroid camera and cutting it in half. And I was looking at a few different Polaroid cameras and I found this one here. And that did a perfect job. I already disassembled this one here. So we take off this one, we take off this one. There's a few parts inside, I already dismantled. And then we get to a really nice little thing like this. We still have the cover around, but we can disassemble the cover. And I finally get to a little product that looks like I'm building a bomb at the moment. But I'm actually just building an integral bag for my 4x5 camera to shoot 4x5. So this thing is actually the film processing unit of the camera. We don't need much more than the tray that's still here. On this one here, still have the tray because here is the roller thing. So this, this tray also needs to be added to my camera. So since I got a 3D printer last week, I'm really prototyping all this stuff at the moment and thinking about a lot of ideas. 
the main concept I will build is a sliding bag. A sliding bag is actually used for a lot of modern digital bags on, on large format cameras at the moment. You put it in the back of the camera and on the left side, or right side, you got a little um, glass plate where you can focus everything. And on the right side, you got your bag, your digital bag, or in my case, which I will do, my instant bag. So the thing is, I will have the glass plate, the instant bag, and I just switch over to shoot, switch back to focus, switch over to shoot. That's the idea I have behind my concept. I'm already drawing everything and I, I hope to get something prototyping pretty soon. I, I really want to share that story on Instagram. But I'm not a product designer or, or an engineer. So I'm just a tinkerer and I, I really love to prototype and build everything. But still it's just prototyping for me. But I really want to know, are there some people out there interested in shooting integral film with 4x5? I know a few of my friends are, but I would really love to hear from you guys if you're interested in it. Don't be scared of a 4x5 camera, they are pretty cheap at the moment on, on eBay. You can get some of them around 100 euros or 120 euros, up to 1000 euros and more for sure. But you can even get really wood cheap new ones from wooden ones. The only thing you need to get then is a lens maybe. Um, and it's not that hard and it's just amazing to have a, like an image that comes out this size of a camera So you should actually try this and just if you just shoot on photo paper and do a contact print just try large format once I will, Probably I will do a video soon about pinhole photography and we will do that There so what is my great basic idea again? I want to build a sliding bag for my 4x5 camera to shoot integral film if you have any ideas, comments or anything about this, just drop them in the comments below and I'm really happy to discuss this with you and get your feedback and input and everything. If you want one of these units, also tell me, because since I'm 3D printing that stuff then, I'd probably be able to produce them for a few of you guys. Um, if it's not mass production, let's hope, well, let's hope it could be mass production, but I'm not lo looking at that big of a market. But this would, this would also get integral film to a bigger audience because there's a lot of large format photographers who shoot on film but I'm sure they would be amazed of shoot, to shoot on integral film. Um, so yeah, the first plan is to do it on this here, on Polaroid film, Polaroid Originals film. And if the Polaroid Originals pack is finished, I'm gonna try to build it for Instax wide. So we can shoot Instax wide or Polaroid Originals and switch that back just lock off, lock on and have a different kind of film to be able to shoot. Well, yeah, that was more of a concept today, episode today, but I hope you liked it. <laughs> I hope you liked my crazy brain ideas. And if you have any suggestions or any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if you like that content and want to see more about the series, just hit me up. Um, I would be happy to if you subscribe to the channel and hope to see you next time. Bye.